In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her holy rosary. Today we join her in contemplating the coronation of Our Lady as Queen of Heaven and the glory of all the angels and saints. Our Lord had promised Our Lady that He would reunite her glorious soul with her most chaste body. And so, she is taken, body and soul, into heaven and crowned. St. John of Damascus writes, The King introduces you into his chamber. There, powers protect you, principalities praise you, thrones proclaim you, cherubim are hushed in joy, and seraphim magnify the true mother of their very Lord, O Lady. You were not taken into heaven as Elijah, nor did you gaze upon the third heaven with St. Paul. No, you have reached the royal throne of your son. You see it with your own eyes. You stand by it in joy and in unspeakable familiarity. O gladness of angels, O oh, sweetness of patriarchs and of the just, perpetual exaltation of the prophets, rejoicing the world, sanctifying all things, you refresh the weary from heaven, you comfort the sorrowful, you help us in our sickness, you help us to obtain forgiveness, you strengthen us in mourning, you are the perpetual succor of all those who invoke you. See this beautiful scene, Our Lady being escorted into heaven. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors, let her enter. Who is she that comes forth as a morning rising, fair as a moon, bright as the sun, terrible as an army, set in battle array? Picture the holy virgins thanking Our Lady for her example, the confessors saluting her as their teacher and mistress, the holy martyrs thanking her for her great constancy in suffering, the one who taught them how to endure suffering. St. James is the only apostle there at that time, and he thanks her on the behalf of all the other apostles who are as yet still upon the earth. And then imagine the holy patriarchs greeting her, Adam and Eve telling her, in the words of St. Alphonsus, Ah, beloved daughter, you have repaired the injury done by us to the human race. You have obtained for the world that blessing lost by us. On account of our crime, they were lost. But by you, we are saved. And for your fiat, the world is forever blessed. We imagine the holy Simeon coming forward to kiss her feet. Saint Zachariah, Saint Elizabeth thanking Our Lady for her visit to them, the humility and charity which she showed to them then. Saint John the Baptist with unutterable joy he thanks her for the sanctification in the womb of his mother, which led him upon the path of great holiness. 
who can describe the delight of Saints Joachim and Saint Anne on seeing their beautiful daughter, what happiness they are filled with. And how does Our Lady respond when she meets Saint Joseph? What joy there is in their reunion. Saint Alphonsus imagines him as saying to Our Lady, Ah, my lady and spouse, how shall I ever be able to thank our God as I ought for having made me your spouse, you who are his true mother. Through you I merited on earth to attend upon the childhood of the incarnate word. Blessed be the moments that I spent in life serving Jesus and you, my holy spouse. Behold, our Jesus, let us console ourselves that now he is no more lying in a stable upon hay as he was when together we saw him at his birth. Nor is he despised in the shop in poverty like at Nazareth. Now he sits at the right hand of the Father as King and Lord of heaven and earth. And now, O oh my Queen, we shall never more depart from his holy feet where we shall bless and love him eternally. She is ushered forward now to the Divine Majesty where the humble Virgin kneels adoring him wholly lost in the consciousness of her nothingness and thanking him for the graces that he bestowed upon her solely by his goodness and especially for having made her the mother of the eternal word. We pause with Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich to take in the scene, the place like a boundless dome full of thrones, garden, palaces, arches, flower gardens and trees, pathways sparkling like gold and precious stones, on high in the centre, in infinite splendour, the throne of the Godhead, where Our Lady walks towards. The saints grouped according to their spiritual relationships. Now we gaze ahead into eternity. With Anne Catherine Emmerich, we see the religious in their orders, higher and lower, according to their individual merits. We see the martyrs according to their victories. We see laity of all classes according to their progress in the spiritual life and the efforts they made to sanctify themselves, all ranged in admirable order in these palaces and gardens, which are inexpressibly brilliant and lovely, trees with little yellow luminous fruits. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich says, among those in my vision, I saw a priest of my acquaintance who said to me, your task is not yet finished. Oh, blessed Anne wished to stay. She joined in some of the sweet singing with those legions of soldiers even in Roman costume who were martyrs and now rejoiced with the King of Kings. But she looks down upon earth. It seems to her like a speck of land from the glories of heaven where everything is so immense. She tells us, Ah, life is so short, the end soon comes, one can gain so much. Be not sad, willingly and joyfully, accept all sufferings from God in order to obtain this glorious prize, to join Our Lady to join the saints in this wondrous company. And now we turn to the queen on her throne. 
Venerable Mary of Agrida, describes her coronation. Amid great glory, the Most Holy Mary arrives body and soul at the throne of the Most Blessed Trinity. The Eternal Father then said to her, Ascend higher, my daughter and my dove. The Incarnate Word My Mother, of whom I have received human nature, receive now from my hand the reward you have merited. And the Holy Spirit, my most beloved spouse, enter into the eternal joy, which corresponds to the most faithful love. Now enjoy your love without solicitude, for past is the winter of suffering, for you have arrived at our eternal embraces. What a festive was that day when Our Lady arrived in heaven. What joy there was among the angels and saints and the thousands of her guardian angels who rejoiced at this beautiful moment. Even still, while she is in heaven, Venerable Mary tells us, within the glorious body of the Queen, over her heart was visible to the saints a small monstrance of singular beauty and splendor, which particularly rouses continual admiration and joy. Our testimony and reward for having afforded to the sacramental word an acceptable resting place and sanctuary, and of her having received Holy Communion so worthily, purely and devoutly. St. Bernard looks at us and tells us with words of encouragement, in dangers, in doubts, in difficulties, think of Mary, call upon Mary, let not her name depart from your lips, never suffer it to leave your heart, and that you may obtain the assistance of her prayer, neglect not to walk in her footsteps, with her for guide, you shall never go astray. While invoking her, you shall never lose heart. So long as she is in your mind, you are safe from deception. While she holds your hand, you cannot fall. Under her protection, you have nothing to fear. If she walks before you, you shall not grow weary. If she shows you a favour, you shall reach the goal. And Saint Augustine, Blessed Virgin Mary, who can worthily repay you with praise and thanksgiving for having rescued a fallen world by your generous consent. Accept then such poor thanks as we have to offer, unequal though they may be, to your merits. Let us picture ourselves now before her, before her throne, kneeling there in gratitude, thanking her with the children of Fatima, Saint Bernadette, the Saint Juan Diego, of all those to whom she is deigned to appear. Blessed Mother, take our prayers into the sanctuary of heaven and enable them to bring about our peace with God. Holy Mary, help the miserable, strengthen the discouraged, comfort the sorrowful, pray for your people, plead for the clergy, intercede for all women consecrated to God. May all who venerate you feel now your help and protection. Make it your continual care to pray for the people of God, for you were blessed by God and were made worthy to bear the Redeemer of the world, who lives and reigns forever. Blessed Mother, in your glory, cast your eyes of mercy upon us. Blessed Mother, crowned as the beloved daughter of God the Father, the mother of God the Son, the spouse 
of God the Holy Spirit, the glory and queen of all the saints. Pray for us, lead us by the hand to arrive at that destination of peace where we hope to serve you as your servants, as your clients, as your slaves, thanking you then for the great assistance you've paid us in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.